I've got this process that I use when I test websites. Does it talk to a database? Can I or someone else see what I type? Does the page reference a file? I'm going to open up phpapp.infosecaddicts.com. And then what I do is I ask myself three questions on every page. Question number one, does it talk to a database? Right now, when you look in the address bar, there's nothing there. But if I click one of the links, now I have something there. So this is the first thing that I look for. If I say, is it talking to a database, we call this parameter passing. Anytime you're looking at a web page and it's got page name, parameter name, parameter value, this is the indication that it's talking to a database. And what we want to do is we want to insert a single quote right there. Okay. So now that we've got this SQL error message, I want to try something. Okay. So I've got this error message from SQL. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to say order by 100. So you notice I kept the single quote there. Then I put in space order by 100 dash dash. And then after that, any letter you want. If you guys got an unknown column 100 in your order by clause. So now change that order by from 100 to 50. See what happens. Okay, change it to 25. Okay, how about 12? How about six? So it looks to me like we got a regular page when we did six, yeah? Okay, how about seven? So at six, we get a good web page. Okay, so watch this. So we're gonna say union all select one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the question is, what's a union select statement in SQL? The developer of the website wrote one statement. You, the attacker, are writing a second statement and then you're joining the two together. But there's a really important line right here. What does it say to do or say you must have? If the developer's statement has select one, two, three from something, then when you do your union, you have to select you have to have the same number of fields. So why we did the order by technique first to figure out how many fields were in his query, right? So once we know how many fields are in his query, then we can do our query. And now do you guys see here's the pictures and here's a number. Here's the title description and then here's a number so whatever is in his field four probably shows up as the picture right whatever is in his field five probably shows up as the description here right so here for four I go right here and I'm just gonna say at at data dir or five I'll go user. Try it. Put something in column four and something in column five. This is SQL injection. That's exactly what this is. So you're now starting to see, wait a minute. If I'm looking at a website and I see parameter passing, I insert a single quote. Once you insert that single quote, then you can start to see like, okay, I get it. It throws an SQL error. 
If it's throwing the SQL error, the errors tell the story. I was sitting in this presentation about 10 years ago and I had one of these moments. The presentation was about something else, but the guy put this picture on the, on the slide and everything changed for me after this picture. How many of you guys have seen pictures like this a thousand times? We've all seen this. All right, yeah, 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 web app, right? So here's the client. The client communicates over HTTP with the web server. Now, if you look at the web server here, he's calling this the presentation server, the presentation layer. Then he's calling this the app layer. Then he'll call this the database layer or the database tier. So let's say it's Apache PHP MySQL. Is it possible that all three of these could be installed on one server? Is it possible that these can all be installed on separate servers? Is it possible that I could have load balance or clustered web servers? Load balance or clustered app servers? Load balance or clustered database servers? Yeah, all of that is possible and it would still be considered a web app. Here's the important part. You ever go to a website, you ask for a page that doesn't exist, you get a 404 file not found. You ever messing with a website and you get an error like DB script type mismatch or Doku or anything like that? So that means you're here. If you get an error that says ODBC, JDBC or SQL, that means you're here, yes? Errors tell the story of where you're at when you're hacking. While I'm attacking the website, I used to run into cases where I thought I had SQL injection and I would be so frustrated, right? I'm attacking and I'm thinking that I had an SQL injection, but the error is telling me who am I talking to? So if you're talking to the web server, you need to attack web server misconfigurations like the web server web dev or web server put dat put method which allow for unchecked file upload if you're getting db script or type mismatch errors or doku errors you need to try to send malicious content to the web app to try to make the app execute something if you're getting SQL errors, ODBC, JDBC, if you're getting OLE errors, object linking and embedding, if you're getting those types of errors, then you need to be trying to send SQL syntax to it or LDAP syntax to it. And I remember looking at that presentation and being like, oh my God, that's what it is. Because when you're, when you're just clicking stuff, you're kind of like, oh, I clicked this. You, you, you know what I mean? But the error message tells the story. So what if I have, I click a link. If I put a quote here, as soon as I did that, is it web server, web app, or database? So this is SQL injection. Now, what if I try here? So here I put in a single quote and a single quote. Okay, did I find another SQL injection? Or did oh. I? So this is, this is what guys? Uh-huh. How many of you guys knew that there were all these other type of injections besides SQL injection. Server side include injection, XPath injection, IMAP SMTP injection. There's a lot of them, huh? Yeah. So I was on a pen test and I told the customer we found Sparkle injection. And the customer looked at me actually pretty funny. But what is S-P-A-R-Q-L? Obviously, I was testing the website. I insert a single quote and what? It gave back sparkle errors. 
So now when you see that, you just have to look up Sparkle syntax. If I get LDAP errors, I look up LDAP syntax. Does this make sense, guys? It's not just SQL. SQL is probably the most prevalent database. That's why you've heard of SQL injection. But if you're logging into a VPN, it'll more than likely be LDAP injection. Here's my VPN, right? You see parameter passing, right? You'd insert the single quote, right? My VPN's not vulnerable, but that's what you would do, right? The question is, the database for this VPN, that the valid user database for the VPN is not SQL, but is actually Active Directory, is that possible? Yeah. It won't be SQL injection. It would most likely be the LDAP injection, right? So when you're attacking it, you wouldn't put SQL commands here. You would put LDAP commands here. Now the, the trick is the same. You insert your single quote, and if you see LDAP errors, you use LDAP syntax. If you see no SQL errors, and you use no SQL syntax like MongoDB and Hadoop. The testing is always the same. You look for parameter passing and you insert a single quote. 